If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we are going to look at the evolution of Clancy Ross and the different programs he used to develop his classic physique during the Silver Era. Clancy Ross won the AAU Mr. America competition in 1945 and went on to win the professional Mr. USA, beating Steve Reeves in 1948. Other notable titles were his Pro America win in 1946, the IFBB North American Championships in 1949, and the Pro NABBA Mr. Universe Tall Division in 1955. Before reaching the heights of bodybuilding that he did in the Silver Era, Clancy actually started with a fairly thin yet athletic physique as he participated in sports. In 1940, weighing only at 135 pounds, he began lifting weights and began his first program which consisted of simply hoisting the barbell overhead from a standing position and for several months basically only performed standing presses. Sure, he worked his upper body well, but the program was rather limited to just pressing the weight overhead. Later on, his training partner designed a much more balanced program, which consisted of a single set of 10 repetitions, each of squats, shrugs, standing presses, bent over rows, the bent arm lying laterals, which is nowadays called the dumbbell fly, barbell curls, upright rows, repetition cleans to the shoulder, prints behind the neck, pullover, lying floor presses, and deadlifts. He trained three times a week on this routine for one and a half years and gained 30 pounds. He however reached a sticking point and gave up training for two years. In hindsight of course, Clarence believes that the program should have been changed after it to a set system by progressively increasing the number of sets to two sets and then three sets and then occasionally changing the program to suit his progressive advancement in bodybuilding. By 1942, Clarence entered military service weighing only 155 pounds, having lost weight since his layoff. During this time, however, Clarence Ross would meet Bill Pearl's famous friend and trainer, Leo Stern, who took Clarence under his wing and designed for him a very unique split program called the Split Set Routine. In this rare system, the trainee performs a full body workout, but his upper body workout and lower work are split and work completely differently. The upper body work is performed as a circuit, whilst the lower body work that follows is performed using the standard set system. In essence, the workout is split into an upper and lower body split, but both splits are performed in the same workout, and this full body workout is performed three times a week. This kind of system just goes to show though how hard these guys work in the gym as natural lifters. Clarence Ross's split set routine was as follows. Upright rows, incline press, lateral raise, alternate curl and press with dumbbells, pullover and floor press, barbell rowing motion, dumbbell curl and dips to conclude cycle 1, followed by cycle 2. Upright rows, incline press, lateral raise, dumbbell curl, barbell rowing motion, pullover and floor press, alternate curl and press with dumbbells, and dips again. Cycle 3, upright rows, incline press, lateral raise, barbell curl, pullover and floor press, barbell rowing motion, dips, sit-ups and side bends, with each of these exercises performed for 10 to 15 reps. This would conclude his upper body training. You will notice that if you analyze the order of the exercises, we basically end up with a circuit with three slightly different cycles that work the upper body in the following order. Upper back, upper chest, shoulders, biceps and shoulders again, triceps and lats, lats, chest and triceps with abs worked at the very end. What is interesting is to also see that the routines intelligently places the muscles antagonistic to each other, that is pull with push, to keep the musculature balanced and functional. 
This in many ways is very similar to Bob Guider's PHA method and incorporated elements of the popular flushing system and superset system that were both developed during the silver era, as well as the cheating system to lift heavier weights. The legs were worked at the end of the workout and Clancy Ross would perform three sets of squats for 10 repetitions and two sets of leg presses for 20 reps using excess of 300 pounds on the squat and up to 600 pounds on the vertical leg press. I thought I would throw in the poundages so that you could see that just because legs were trained at the end of the workout, it didn't mean that Clancy Ross was slacking off. It is also obvious to note that Clancy worked his legs as one would today using the standard set system. In doing the split set system of training, Clancy Ross claims that he made serious gains in bulk and size, and it also improved his cardiovascular system, endurance and power. The next stage of Clancy Ross's development was specialization work for his legs. As is notable from his split set routine, his upper body was well developed at the time as he was performing 25 sets for his upper body, whilst only 5 sets for his legs. Therefore, he decided to split up his training, training upper body in the morning using the split set system as previously described, and he would perform his leg work in the afternoon, adding calf raises to his leg workout. With this change, he was able to devote much more energy to training his legs. After hitting another plateau, Clancy realized that although he had reached a certain level of muscular development, he felt that he needed to increase his tendon and ligament strength and overall power to see further improvements in his physique development. He therefore began to incorporate weightlifting movements such as heavy standing presses, repetition snatches and the clean and jerk, each performed for several sets. He would balance this power building method of bodybuilding by adding squats, shrugs, deadlifts, curls, pullovers and bench presses and essentially combining all three disciplines of Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting and bodybuilding in one routine. This method of power training as it was called in the silver era was popular with the larger physiques of the time such as that of Reg Park. It was at this point in time that Clancy Ross decided to prepare for and enter the 1945 Mr. America competition. The contest was six months away and in preparation for the contest, Clancy performed his split set routine but began to specialize on his weak points like arms, filling out the areas that needed most improvement. He even used cable work to bring out muscularity in lagging body parts. His specialization routine was performed for the first three months of preparation for the Mr. America competition. After this, he decided to add more weight to his frame by performing a bulk routine for one month. This routine, which one could call the forerunner to the high intensity system, was a very abbreviated program that allowed only one maximal set per exercise, with each exercise performed for only 10 repetitions. His routine was simple, performing the standing press, barbell curl, upright row, bench press, incline bench press, deadlift, squat, leg press and calf raise for only one set. To bulk up, Clancy drank a lot of milk and relaxed and took life easy. At this point, Clancy began his definition program, performing up to 15 to 20 reps per exercise. The last month, he would train every day, pumping up every muscle in his body to the limit to bring out further muscularity. He split up his program, performing all upper body training one day and all lower body training the next. These final pre-contest programs have been previously explained in several videos on this channel. Following his Mr. America win in 1945, Clancy began to finally use the standard set system using the following program. Squats, calf raises, bench press, bench over rowing, upright rowing, barbell curls, reverse curls, tricep curls, and sit-ups. Each exercise performed for three sets of 10 repetitions, training this full body system three times a week. And although he changed his programs several times, his maintenance program was usually a full body program three times a week. In summary, Clarence Ross used a variety of routines to transform his physique into the winning form which won him the 1945 Mr. America title, starting with a beginner's routine, followed by his split set routine, then the power training system, followed by a specialization program for weak body parts. He then performed a high intensity program for bulk, which was then followed by his pre-contest routines to enhance muscularity and definition. 
So I do hope you have enjoyed this video on Clarence Ross's transformation from an athletic teen to his Mr. America winning physique. And if you have, please give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and please leave your comments and click the bell button to be notified of future videos. What do you think of these complete transformation videos? I'd be happy to try and do more of these in the future. I would like to hear, of course, your comments in the comment section. So please let me know. Anyway, that's it for me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more. And select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you harder, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That does no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was going to explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.